Hello, thank you for watching. Today we'll be covering CA Workload Automation Agent Monitor Release 12. We'll be doing an installation and we'll be connecting to a scheduler environment. Agent Monitor is a new product offering from CA. It's a web-based application that monitors and provides status information about the agents across your workload environment. It works with your schedulers to retrieve this information, providing a high-level overview of all the agents associated with your schedulers, as well as providing the capability to drill down into a single agent, retrieve log files, status information, and other details about the agent. It's a free product for all current CA workload automation customers, so you can grab it now at support.ca.com. I definitely recommend going and checking it out. Uh, in order to use Agent Monitor effectively, you must have one of the following schedulers at the appropriate versions. Uh, CA Workload Automation AE 11.3.6 SP2 and above, CA 7.11.3.12 and above, Workload Automation DE 11.3 and above, and Workload Automation ESP 11.4 and above. For each of these products, you must have the appropriate web component installed uh, with the product. That's how Agent Monitor communicates with the scheduler. So make sure that you have these installed. In order to uh, find out how to install and properly configure your web component, you can go to the engine's documentation at wiki.ca.com. There will be installation and configuration information on how to set up the web components properly. As for documentation on Agent Monitor itself, you can go to wiki.ca.com uh, and select the Agent Monitor wiki. It's listed as CA Workload Automation Agent Monitor Release 12. You can also, this is going to be your uh, most up-to-date page for Agent Monitor documentation. So uh, I recommend going and checking this out. It will be um, accessible for any customer even before downloading. So if you go to that page, you should be able to access, this, uh, access it and read through before even downloading the product. Uh, if you want to ask us questions about Agent Monitor or any of the engines at any point in time, you can do so at our communities page or communities.ca.com. We have people monitoring that and we're constantly looking over and trying to answer your questions. So feel free to ask us questions about Agent Monitor there. With that, we'll get started. So I've already started this install process. Um, I copied over the installation con uh, media's contents to my environment. There are two binaries that are included, an install for Windows and an install for Win uh, Linux. Uh, we'll be doing a Linux install, but before we move forward with that, two important points are that you cannot, one, that you cannot be the root user to complete this install. If you try, the install will stop at the very beginning and will not let you continue. Uh, the second thing to keep in mind is that whichever user you do choose to do the installation, they must have write permissions to the installation directory that you specify. So make sure you've taken care of this ahead of time. Uh, it's not asking us if we want to continue the installation, and we do. And I'm going to skip through the licensing agreement, um, but make sure you do understand the contents of the licensing agreement before moving forward. Uh, it's now asking me the, the the directory where I want Agent Monitor installed. I'm going to choose the default directory, but once again, make sure you have the appropriate permissions to write to this directory for the user that you choose to complete the install. It's now asking us uh, port information that we want for the application server for Agent Monitor. I'm going to choose the defaults for these. You can choose what you like, and this is the place to specify that. It's now asking us about the database. Uh, Agent Monitor deploys its own PostgreSQL database. You do not have to have this set up beforehand, and it will deploy it for you and set everything up for you. So nothing to worry about before or after the installation. It's asking us for a connection port, and I'll choose the default. And it's asking us for a password for this database, which I'll type in now. The rest of the information is summary information. It just wants you to confirm is valid. Um, so just go through and make sure everything's good. It looks like everything's good for me, so I'll confirm this. And now it's going to have us extract some files, and it's going to do uh, configuration steps. This does take a couple minutes, so I'm going to pause the video here, and we'll come back once this is completed. So that step uh, completed. Uh, we can see it set up the HMonitor DB uh, connection and did some other uh, configuration steps that you can see all through this section. It's now asking us if we want to start Tomcat and PostgreSQL, and we do. And it's going to complete some final initialization steps, but it gave us two very important links. The first URL it provides is the actual login URL that we're going to be using to log in here in just a minute. The second one it provides is the wiki.ca.com link to the agent monitor documentation. So I definitely recommend, once again, 
go and take a look at the documentation. It's there to access. You don't have to have the product downloaded. Uh, so it's definitely uh, some something that you're going to want to take a look at. And as soon as these steps, this last step completes here, we'll go and connect and do a login. So with that, the, the last step completed. Uh, we are now go ahead. I'm going to copy this link. And I'll grab a window over here. And we'll copy the link in. And we're now at the agent monitor login page. I'm going to log in with the default user that's provided at install, the default user and password. And we can see that this uh, agent monitor here has no agents, no scheduler connections. It's completely empty. We're on the dashboard perspective right now. We're going to go and add a scheduler by going to the scheduler's perspective. So once again, no schedulers in the table, nothing's there. We'll go ahead and click Actions and Add. And we're going to have to fill in some information about our scheduler. The first it wants is a name. This has nothing to do with your scheduler environment. It's just a name that you want Agent Monitor to associate that scheduler with. So I'm just going to call it AM Demo for Agent Monitor Demo. This is a D-series environment, but once again, Agent Monitor can support uh, workload automation AE, CS, CA7, or ESP. Uh, as long as you have that web services component for that product set up. Uh, I'll fill in the address now. Remember, as I grab this address on my other screen, the this is the address to the web service, not the actual scheduler itself. So make sure you're putting in the correct address and the correct port for that. The last thing you're going to need is a username and password. And we can verify the connection. And we can see the connection to go through, and we can add the scheduler to our environment. And we now have the scheduler. We can see right from the details um, about that scheduler there, there's eight agents that the scheduler type is D-series. Um, so we can go to our back to our dashboard, and we can see it will be filled in. We have 100% of our D-series schedulers that we're connected to up and running. Uh, and we have 50% of our agents up and 50% of our agents down. We can click into these columns. You can see their, their uh, color kind of changed slightly. We click into those to get detailed information about the agents contained within that filter. But we can also view information about all the agents by clicking on the agent's perspective. And we can see all the agents up here. We get uh, a ton of information about them their version, their host name, what OS they're running, uh, their scheduler name, that's the name that we picked in Agent Monitor. The scheduler type will all be listed here. If you did specify an alias, you will have that listed twice. So the alias is represented as its own agent with its own row inside of Agent Monitor, just for an FYI. Um, we can go ahead now, and there, there are many things we can do with this, but the much larger list, we have the capability of searching and filtering down based off a of build or host name, scheduler type, whatever you're looking for. We also have the ability to select an agent and do actions on it, such as retrieving logs and other detailed information. So there's a lot that this provides in isolating a single agent. But once again, if we go back to the dashboard, we'll see we get the whole view of the environment as well. So with that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us on Agent Monitors. I hope, we're, we're, hope you're now excited to use it, and we're looking forward to getting and answering your questions. Thank you for your time.